Yeah, there's a problem, sir. I don't see how this idiot is the perfect candidate out of all of our other test subjects. <laughs> yes, I know this person was a veteran during the Battle of Toronto, but he also has the personality of Gaston, except all the villainies were replaced with stupidity. <laughs> Fine. All right, let's get this shit over with. <sighs> Mr. Edward Collins, could you please proceed onto the cockpit of the Griffin prototype? Launching in five, four, three, two, zero ignition, lift off. usual location, that's because it's out of service at the moment, because some um, UN pilot was dumb enough to crash land into it! Oh, come on, I said it was yeah, an act! Yeah, you'll be hearing from me in court, buddy! What? Alright, so, Zootopia! Released into theaters on February 2016 in Belgium and in America a month later, Zootopia tells the story of By the Book Cop Judy Hopps and con artist Nick Wilde as they solve a mysterious set of events that befall the city of the same name as the movie, which I won't spoil here if you wish to see the film, which I recommend. The ratings were pretty high by the movie's release and it earned a gross of $1 billion, thus making it the fourth highest grossing film of 2016. Zootopia spawned a card game, a mobile game, a graphic novel, a theme park in a Shanghai Disney theme park which was halted for a brief time due to the pandemic, but eventually resumed. As well as in addition to a lawsuit, and a ton of fan-made media ranging from fan art, fan films, fan fiction, and of course, fan comics. Alright, so a lot of you are wondering, what comic are we going to look into? <laughs> oh, buddy, you saw the title. I think you know where this is going. Everyone, allow me to introduce to you Borba, an artist originating from Brazil on DeviantArt who writes and draws various Zootopia fan comics. And most infamously of all, the first of a trilogy he did which involves the property before mentioned with the title, I Will Survive. No, 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 no. Not the song. 
the song is actually good. But with that being said, however, you may be wondering, how bad is this comic? <laughs> well, allow me to say this comic is so bad that it has memes ridiculing it. Yeah, that bad. It's about time we found out how this got the reputation it got. As we dig into, I will survive. So the comic starts off on the establishing shot of Judy's apartment as we soon find out she's pregnant. Sweet cheese! Upon learning the news, Judy wakes up Nick, who are apparently a couple now. Which also begs the question to begin with. What type of people would ship a literal fox and a rabbit? I mean, someone shipping two members that are from two completely different species? I mean, seriously, who the hell in the right mind does that? Oh, God damn it! Her intent is to tell him what's going on, but only after Nick takes a shower, that is. Judy finally tells Nick she's pregnant. He doesn't believe this at first, but only until the twitching of her nose reveals otherwise that he overreacts with joy. However, that is soon crushed as she announces she doesn't want the child. You know, normally I'd ask if it's option one, abortion, or option three, adoption, but since this is the comic that was memed to death, I think you know that she's referring to the former. And this leads to several problems. One, when did they even become a couple? Two, does the guy even know the anatomy of rabbits and how they work? I mean, the only reason rabbits' nose would twitch is to have their scent receptors contact air to detect and identify scents within the environment they're in. And three, this is the most unrealistic pregnancy handling I have ever seen. I mean, I've seen ASMRs with more realistic handling of pregnancies than this. I mean, no one in their right mind would immediately make the decision to either abort, keep, or adopt. I mean, granted, unless it's for serious reasons, they'll definitely do number one. However, this obviously wasn't the case. And also, Nick, as you'll see throughout the comic, is a pro-birthing piece of shit. I mean, granted, Nick was an asshole in the movie, but he wasn't a misogynist, he was a smartass. And that's only because of the discriminatory environment he was in given he's a pred. But here, he sounds like every anti-abortion prick I've encountered online. So as I mentioned, Nick freaks out, only for Judy to calm him down and explain her reason why. Yes, I do know there are some cases of interbreeding, but they're extremely rare and none of them involved a couple formed by a pred and prey. So I foolishly believed we didn't have to take any precautions, but how wrong I was. Okay. Questionable things aside, she reveals that she's afraid that the child born from this conception will create what appears to be a rejected piece of art from an album cover of the band Beast in Black. Fight until you die by the pain of the one you hate. And the prison of the game. Die by the pain of the one you love to hate with all your heart. Another reason being would be the child would be too big for her to carry to term. So basically either a chestburster or the first time we saw Aaron Yeager's Titan form. Not really sure how this would improve the comic much. After her explanation, Nick is not happy. So what you're saying is, hey Nick, if you can get me pregnant, I don't want to have any children with you. Did I hit the mark, Judy? He's not taking it very well. So Judy then apologizes for not having a talk earlier, but states that there is another reason, that being her career. You know I'm about to be promoted to lieutenant, and if I accept this risky pregnancy, my career will be halted for months, or years, or even forever. In the worst case scenario, if I suffer any sequela or an ill-fated pregnancy, it's not only my life and my career that are in danger, Nick. I became a symbol, an inspiration to all these small mammals out there who are out the big suit. Oh my god, this comic suffers more text walls than control the leak. So after that long-ass explanation, Nick still isn't taking it well at all. Judy, on the other hand, takes offense to this, saying that he knows full well that she'll do anything for her career. Yes, I do know. It seems like you could even kill our baby for your career. And then, we're introduced to the door of many a meme as she bitch slaps Nick. Will this be the equivalent of, I am a man, or Freddy shall rule the world? Doubt it. So after that, Nick gets up as Judy begs Nick to forgive her. And more religious symbolism. Yay. And here's another problem. This man is pushing his politics into this comic. And don't you fucking dare say, Oh, the movie did the same thing too. Um, bullcrap. That movie was tackling racism. Human rights are not up for debate. 
This moron is spraying right-wing propaganda as if people should freaking follow it. Speaking of which, let's play a drinking game. Each and every single goddamn time Nick says something an anti-abortionist would say, take a shot. What would have happened if your mother while pregnant with you had decided to interrupt her pregnancy? I'll tell you what would have happened. If you hadn't been born, Judy, this world would be as bleak as ever. Without your light, I'd still be on the streets living a meaningless life. That's not true, Nick. I'm sure you would. Judy, listen. There are people who make a difference in the world, and you are one of them. Even being a little bunny, you stopped an absurdly nasty conspiracy and helped change the hearts of millions. To me, things like these can never have happened without you. For God's sakes, Judy, please give this unborn child the opportunity to do the same. I beg you, please let your light continue to shine through him or her. So after that bullshit argument he's made, Judy refuses stating her body, her rules. And Nick, not respecting women, reaches for the door. Nick, don't go. Please stay with me. Let's talk this over. Do you want to talk? Well, here's something I'd like to know. Why didn't you keep it a secret from me? I mean, why didn't you just get rid of our child without me knowing anything? She tells Nick it wouldn't be the honest thing to do. But Nick, in discontinuity being a misogynistic piece of crap, opens the door and leaves her. He's an asshole. Who? It's been better for you, for us, if you had kept me in the dark about your premeditated sin. Goodbye, Judy. And so our comic ends with her breaking down in tears while the narrator speaks. Nothing lasts forever. Even an apparently everlasting love that has triumphed over the odds and many challenges may eventually come to an end. And remember, my friend, future events such as these will affect you in the future. Honestly, if they can't be together over a simple disagreement, it was never really love to begin with. And that was I Will Survive. Time for my pros and cons. If there are any pros at all. The art is only somewhat decent. That's it. Everything else is a mess. The plot is in shambles, and not to mention, like a lot of Pureflex's shit, Borba's religious and political message are defecated right down your throat. Nick is out of character, and more of an asshole than he ever was in a movie. In fact, if the movie version of Nick saw this version, I think he'd say this. You are a douchebag. What's worse, this is supposed to come off as an emotional roller coaster, but honest to God, I don't feel it here. And it just leaves me disgusted with what a piece of shit it truly is. Final analysis, is it F minus? <laughs> you want some great Zootopia material? I cannot recommend this. In fact, allow me to say it deserves the mocking it gets on a daily basis. So do avoid this at all costs. Unless you want to give it some memeage, that is. Well, that's all for today, everyone. I'm Indie Fan, and I'll catch you next time. I